My name is Dr. Mavis Pelquabla. In this presentation, I will be talking to you about publishing, authorship, and choosing a journal for your research publication. I will walk you through why the need for publishing your research article, some tips about choosing a journal for your publication, and finally, some guidelines for authorship. Now, why do we need to publish? For several reasons. One is to share your practice or your work with others. Publishing increases your impact and the visibility of your work. Publishing is also one of the means of disseminating your research findings. It creates scholarship. It also creates recognition, expertise, and your track record. Publishing improves your CV. It's for promotion and even for getting a research grant for your research project. There are different publication types. It could be a newsletter, a professional magazine, a peer review journal, policy brief, book review, or chapter in a book, or a book where you are the single author or edited collection, conferences where you have the opportunity to present either orally or using a poster, radio and television broadcasts. These are different publication types. Now, in publishing a journal article, you'll have to consider choosing a journal. You will need to look at the guidelines for authors and who should be an author, who qualifies to be an author. So let's start with choosing a journal, some points to consider in choosing a journal for your manuscript. First, who is the publisher? You may want to look at the publisher. You may also want to look at the editor or the editorial board members. You may want to look at whether it is an international journal or a national journal, whether you aim to consider people in your country or you want an international audience. Guidelines for contributors. Is it a peer review journal or not? You may want to look at this before choosing a journal for your research publication. The number of issues per year. You may want to know if you can publish in that journal in a particular year or if you mix a particular deadline, you may have to postpone until the following year. The maximum number of references allowed. The article length in terms of the maximum number of words permitted by the journal. You may want to look at this and stick to it once you decide to publish in that particular journal. You may also want to consider the impact factor of that journal. And finally, you may want to look at cost implications. Is there a charge for article processing? The APC, is it a, a, a journal that you will need to pay for the cost of publication? You may want to look at all this when you are deciding to settle on a journal for your publication.
identify the possible journals and then have a plan of submission have a plan of submission order the journals in the order in which you would want to submit to them you may have gotten quite a number of journals that are suitable for your paper or for your manuscript you need to order them in 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 the order in which you would want to submit to them submit to journal one after the other do not submit to two journals concurrently decide whether you would want to resubmit or move to the next uh, journal the next journal in line so you receive comments from one journal you may want to decide whether to revise it and submit to the same journal or to move on to the next uh, journal in line but you would need to consider the comments you receive that really will help you in revising the work the ultimate goal is to publish your is to get your paper published so don't get discouraged when one journal is not able to publish your paper let's look at some guidelines for authors so once you decide to publish your paper in a particular journal the journal always gives specifications about the title the the number of word the word limit for the title as well as the characters so they have even character limits you have to check your title and see if this fits into the journal specification from the title you move on to the authors and their affiliations so you list all the authors and their affiliations then you have the abstracts then the keywords after the keywords you have the main body of the work and normally you use the imrad uh, structure which is starting with the introduction with the methods the result and the discussion referencing style every journal specify the kind of referencing style you should use you would have to look at it and stick to it the number of tables and figures allowed by the journal you will have to look at that other journals will ask for re, uh, for ethical approvals and so once you have been able to obtain ethical approval for your work it is important that you indicate it quoting the numbers and then if there are conflicts of interest you will have to state it if there is none you will have to state it as well then authors contribution so the contribution of each of the authors listed you will have to state that and then reviewers some journals will ask you to suggest um, reviewers for your paper and you may want to look at that as well now who should be an author who should who qualifies to be an author the person should be part of conceiving the research idea or designing the work secondly the person should be an author should be part of those who drafted or revised the article and finally an author should approve the final version an author must participate in all these three steps now imagine that you are the lead researcher in a project you have worked with a number of people on this project and you are about to start writing a research paper who might qualify to be an author of this paper 
So one, your research supervisor who guided you during the project. Yes, this person, your research supervisor qualified to be an author. A colleague who taught you how to use a research technique. This person cannot be an author. A colleague who collaborated with you on the study. Yes, this person can be an author. The head of your department, even if he or she was not involved in the study. No, your head of department, once the person is not involved in the study, cannot be an author. And finally, an earlier researcher whose ideas influence your work. This person does not qualify to be an author. You will have to reference this person. Now, stating the author's contribution, I have an example here of a contribution statement from a paper published in South African Journal of Communication Disorders. And so, in this paper, um, the author's contribution, they stated that XM was a principal researcher and wrote the article. PF supervised the research project made a substantial contribution to the conception and design as well as edited the manuscript. And then JK supervised the work and made a substantial contribution to data analysis. So this is just an example of how to state the author's contribution. Finally, let's look at how to search for a journal using the Jane Journal Finder. The full meaning of Jane, that is J-A-N-E, is Journal Author Name Estimator. Journal Author Name Estimator. That is the Jane Journal Finder. Finder. So normally, you just open a browser and then type Jane Journal Finder. It will give you an empty space where you can copy and paste your abstract, the abstract of your project. And once you put your abstract in the blank space there, it will give you list of journals that are suitable for your paper and from there you would want to read about each of these journals look at the article processing charge look at the different guidelines and then decide to choose one for your research publication thank you for listening